Hello, good evening, and welcome to Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium, better known as the Vatican, here at Delta St. John's, where the host Blue Jays are taking on the visiting Crestview Knights. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Dave Bowen, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here in this non-conference matchup. Two very good basketball teams tonight, Dave. Yeah, absolutely, Garrett. It's great to be your wingman tonight. Hello, high school basketball fans. Great non-conference action here in February. Great tournament tune-up. Crestview Knights 16-1, Delta St. John's 12-5. The starting lineups look like this. First for the visiting Crestview Knights, Gavin Etzler wears number one, Mitch Temple's number five. Number 10 is Carson Hutter. Nate Lickley wears 25, and Ren Sheets stands inside this tip-off circle wearing number 33. For the St. John's Blue Jays, Landon Grothaus wears number two, Nolan Schwinnin at number five. Number 11 is Cameron Elwer. Austin Munter wears number 12, and his brother Aaron Munter just lost the tip-off. He wears number 33. The Knights come in after a victory over LCC last night, 58-40. St. John's fell to St. Henry, 53-51. Carson Hunter slaps it down low to Ren Sheets, working against Munter in the lane. Holding the basketball, gets rid of it to Mitch Temple on the left wing. He'll put it on the deck, drive to that left block, turn around and lob back out to Hunter. Excellent man-to-man -man defense, the staple for the Johnnies. Hunter throws back left to Temple. Left elbow back to the basket. Throws back out to Hunter. And his first possession, tight defense played by Delta St. John's, forces Crestview to reset 40 seconds in. Crestview starts four senior guards with Wade Sheets, the sophomore post player. Temple throws left to Hunter. And the Knights... Now Etzler at the top of the key, thought about the three. And Crestview hold the basketball for the first minute of the contest. Great defense, great patience on offense. Crestview, key, look for great instead of good. First jumper from Hunter off the mark. Rebound put back up by Ren Sheets and good. And that's a concern for Coach L where he cannot allow Sheets to hit the offensive glass. That was something the Johnnies wanted to limit. Ren Sheets able to do it right there. Austin Munner in the near corner. We'll throw back up to the top of the key to Schwinnin. Errant pass, or Grothaus, excuse me, get it to, got it to Schwinnin. As Grothaus stands inside the center circle, one foot in, one foot out, and a minute and a half gone. Crestview playing man-to-man -man defense as well. Two half-court man-to-man -man defenses here tonight, really going to get after it. Into the far corner, left it back to Munter. Austin Munter for three, short, long rebound, comes out to Etzler. He'll give to Carson Hunter, eyes up, throws right to Temple. Puts it in the high post. Hands off to Lickley coming off the screen. Thought about the three. Hit 10 of them last Saturday night. 10 of them last Saturday. Hit his first three against the T-Birds last night. Temple for three. No. And the rebound corralled by Landon Grothaus. Great check by Aaron Munter on sheets that time. Allowed Grothaus to get the uncontested rebound. Grothaus throws right to Schwinnin into the far corner to Munter. Or excuse me, Elworth. They'll put it on the deck, throw it back out to Austin Munner. Blue Jays, Elwer on the right wing, tries to break down a defender, rises, fires, can't hit, Hunter the board. And that is his staple shot right there, the pull-up jumper, Cameron Elwer. Freshman in name only, he has a lot of experience already this year, leads the Johnnies at 22 points a game. Temple between the circles with 5.15 remaining in the first quarter on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Thrown left to Hunter. He'll get a high ball screen from Sheets. Splits the double team. Hangs. Can't hit off the black backboard. Elwer brings the ball up the floor after the rebound. Works to his right. And a foul committed by Gavin Etzler, the first for either squad. Etzler trying to get through that screen right there. Commits the personal. Gavin Etzler, glue guy for Crestview. He's been their leading scorer off and on. The Knights have four players right at double figures. Makes them very lethal. Hard to guard defensively. Anybody can score. Sheets and Lickley right now leading at 11 points per game for the Knights. Etzler right behind at 10. Grunhaus working on the right wing. Gives to Schwinnin between the circles. Elwer on the left wing. Munter trying to post up. Austin Munter gets it to Aaron Munter. Poked from behind by Temple. Nice rotation over there by Mitch Temple as Aaron Munter has been a greatly improved player for the Blue Jays this year. Probably the most improved player on the squad. Blue Jays looking to get the ball to him early here tonight. There he Swinging is again. Down low to Munter. Patient. Shot blocked from behind by Temple. Blue Jays retain possession. 
Roadhouse thought about the step back. Instead, Elwer working on Hunter. Jumps to the left block. Leans. Hits. Just so much patience right there by Cameron Elwer. Sets his man up. Realizes he's undersized a little bit, but gets Hunter off his toes just a little bit there and scores. Nice job. Hunter, short corner near side. Not a lot of room to work. We'll lob back out to Temple at the high right point. So we approach the midway point of this first quarter. Tied up two. Each side, patient. Bounces to Lickley on the right wing. Gets to Sheets. Turns and faces the basket, working on Munter. Bounces down low. Temple high and scores. Nice catch, cut by Mitch Temple and Ren Sheets. He doesn't have a problem giving it up. Finds his teammate there for two. Elwer in the high post. Jump stops. Kicks to the near corner. Grothaus for three. Yes, sir. And that's what we've seen all this year. Cameron Elwer can score himself, but he can set other guys up. Does it right there. Leads the team in the assist category, Landon Grothaus with the bucket. Hunter pump fakes, drives, goes through the heart of Grothaus. He's called for the block. First foul committed by the St. John's Blue Jays. Yeah, Hunter's been the most improved player for Crestview. We mentioned Aaron Munter for uh, St. John's. Carson Hunter coming out of the game right now, but he has just really improved seeing the whole floor making great passes. Leads Crestview with 85 assists on the year. Blue Jays make wholesale changes as Jack Gerker, Ethan Drugmiller, and TJ Wirtz in the ball game. Three from Lickley off the mark. Rebound to El Elwer. They don't cross the timeline. Angle to the middle of the floor. Sp spies a three-point shooter in Gerker, and he knocks it home. Cameron Elwer, Elwer again penetrates, create, creates good action for the Johnnies. Gerker with the three. Eight to four this score on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Etzler gets... So Harding, three on the way from Mitch Temple. He's got five early first quarter points. Yeah, punch, counter punch, one three for another. Jared Harding with the assist, kicks it out to Temple uncontested from behind the arc. Hell, we're trying to get to the hoop instead. Blue Jays working around the perimeter. There's Grothaus, jump stops in the lane, blocked from behind, goes out of bounds off of him. As you see, great defense there. Jared Harding for Crestview. Swatting yeah. the shot. Absolutely. Landon Grothaus gets in there, but Harding and Sheets, two tall trees there. Landon Grothaus unable to get the shot over them. The deflection comes off of him. Night basketball. Crestview trails by one. It's Nasir Easterling in a game for the Knights. Etzler gets down low to Easterling, working against Grothaus. In the lane, kicks to Harding. In the high post, throws back to Etzler. Guarded by Elwer. Harding on the left wing with 2.10 to go. D3 from Etzler, too strong. Druk Miller the rebound, and he'll give to Elwer. Races up that far sideline. Guarded by Easterling. Bounces into that far corner. Druk Miller hands it right back off. Elwer tries to break down the defender. Hangs, foul, and he will shoot a couple of free throws. Again, Cameron Elwer realizing he had a post player on him. The 6'5", Nasir Easterling says, okay, I'm going to pull you out away from the basket, big fella, and then I'm going to look to penetrate by you. Does so, draws the foul, goes to the free throw line. First three fr free throw for Elwer, up and good. Elwer, the leading free throw shooter. I'm sorry, the second best free throw shooter on the squad at 83%. His teammate, Landon Grothaus, knocks him down at 85%. Blue Jays is a team at 77%, which is as high as you'll see in high school basketball Absolutely. these days. Absolutely. Very impressive. So 10-7 to score as Elwer hits them both to grow the lead to three. Hunter on a right wing. Surveys. Gets to Etzler. Throws left. The Isaac Klein. Etzler rises. Fires. Too strong. And a rebound. Comes to Drew Miller in the near corner. Gavin Etzler, the second leading three-point shooter for Crespio, 52%. Very selective. It's taken two good looks here early. Elwer, the mid-range jumper, hits. That crossover, it is just special. When, when Dr. Naismith invented this game, I don't know if he was thinking of that, but that is pretty. Smooth as peanut butter. Mm. That's a five-point lead for the Blue Jays. Etzler lobs down low to Easterling. Double-teamed. In a tough spot. And it's a turnover on the Knights. 
Coach Etzler's asking for a little contact there. I don't think we've mentioned our officials tonight. We have Tate Mayberry, Eric Schwab, and Brian Schoonover. Looks like Cameron Elwer gets the inbounds pass. Under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Five-point lead for the Blue Jays, looking to grow it here. Elwer angles to the near sideline. Crosses over, another rise and fire, can't hit that one. Offensive rebound though, pulled down by the Jays. Thrown back out straight away. Gerker thought about the three, instead Elwer spins, leaves it off, off the window, up and good for Ethan Drew Miller. The spacing just absolutely beautiful for St. John's right there. Had to help on Cameron Elwer's penetration. Great dish, great bucket for the Johnnies. Blue Jays lead 14-7. Doubling up Crestview with under 15 seconds remaining in a quarter. Temple barks out orders with 10. Throws right. Klein. Hunter. Harding. Temple with three. Has to shoot it. Does. Got it. And that's how the first quarter ends. Seven points in the first for Mitch Temple. St. John's leads Crestview 14 to 9 here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Dave, taking a look at the first quarter stats, anything stand out to you? Yeah, you know, it was a defensive struggle early on, and the offense has got a roll in Crestview, 4 for 10 overall for 40%, three rebounds, only one turnover for the night. St. John's, 5 for 9 for 56%, 2 for 2 from the line. One turnover as well, five rebounds for St. John's. Pass to Schwinnin, stolen away, too long, as Gavin Etzler gives up the three to Temple. He shoots it off the back iron, and Hunter called for the foul. The first foul committed by Carson Hunter. Three for the Knights overall. Hunter just being a little aggressive on that rebound again. I'm very impressed with Aaron Munter and his focus on checking Ren Sheets off the glass. Sheets is a 72% field goal shooter and he gets a lot of buckets off of offensive rebounds. He's had one thus far and that's been it. Nice job by Munter. Aaron Munter gives to Austin Munter at the high right point. Throws left to Gerker on the left wing. Puts it on the deck between the circles. Crosses over, guarded by Temple. Schwinnin gives to Grothaus, left of the center circle. Now will stand inside the center ring. Works to his right. One minute gone here in this second quarter. Bounce down low to Aaron Munner. It's stolen away by Hunter. Nice defensive play by Hunter. Wrapping around. Return, returning the favor, number five, Nolan Schwinnin for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays want to move quickly. Gerker thought about the three instead. Gets to Grillhouse. Schwinnin holds, throws right to Munner. Gets a screen from Munner. And Austin Munner tries to throw it to Aaron Munner into the first row of the seats over there. Here at Robert A. Arns and Gymnasium. And he'll stay with the Blue Jays. A good old good one here, just like we expected. The series, 26-25 in Crestview's favor. Wow. A couple of good basketball programs over the years. Thing going tonight here in Delphus as Elwer gets it on the right wing. He'll bounce to Munner, gives it right back. Eye the rim for just a moment. And now tries to post up Aaron Munner. Working against Etzler, creates a little room and he's called for the charge. Nice heady play again by Gavin Etzler. Knew he couldn't contest Munner down there physically. Beating to the spot with his feet, took the shoulder in the sternum, offensive charge called by Tate Mayberry. Yeah, Gavin Etzler is listed as an inch taller than Aaron Munner. They don't list weights, but I'm guessing he doesn't have a, a chance in that department. Exactly. You don't want to mess with uh, Mr. Munner if you're Gavin Etzler. Lickley off the screen, looking for the Loudix Jewelry 3, couldn't hit it. It goes out of bounds off the Knights. Again, Gavin Etzler realized I can't pull it in myself, see if I can tip it to a teammate. Unsuccessful there. Turnover. Well, not a turnover, but uh, unable to maintain possession of the Crestview Knights. St. John's basketball. Knights lead 14 to 9 on the Lee Samus Recipe scoreboard. They'll bounce to Schwinnin. Elwer coming off a screen into the high post, picks up the dribble, kicks back out to Munner. Aaron Munner hands off to Elwer. They'll work right, throws right to Austin Munner. Roadhouse 
Guarded by Hunter. Hands off to Elwer in the corner for three. Yes, sir. Just so smooth. Garrett, we had the opportunity to have him early in the season against Elida on WOSN. He continues just to be a great player for the Johnnies. Three-pointer there and a turnover on the Knights. Over and back and a timeout called by Doug Epser. Metzger Financial Services timeout for us. 5.22 to go here in the second quarter on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 17 to 9, Doug Etzer calling the timeout, Dave. And what did uh, what was the message there to his night squad? Take care of the basketball offensively. That was an unforced turnover on the Knights right there. Uh, we got to step it up defensively, got to get some stops. But again, offensively, let's take care of it. Work the ball, reverse it, but we got to get the ball in the sheets on offense. Schwinnin directing traffic, looking for Aaron Munner down low. Jeez, working around a perimeter. And they'll get it to Schwinnin once more. Hands off to Grothaus. Left to Elwer. Gets it right back from Munner. He'll post up. Working against Etzler. Turns in the lane. Jump stop. Kicks straight away. Grothaus for the Loudix Jewelry. Three. Inside out action. Aaron Munter out to Landon Grothaus. Great way you want to get the basketball if you're a guard. Inside out, had his feet set, drills it, does land in Grothaus. Great shot. Largest lead of the game for St. John's at 11, 20 to 9. They get it down low to Sheets. Bounce back to Temple for a lot of jewelry. Three, no. And a rebound comes down to Elwer. Sheets was double teamed, but it might have left if he would have been a little patient. Kicked it out right away. Elwer looking to blow the lid off the Vatican. Long rebound goes out of play. And it goes to Crestview. You're right. If that would have went down, they'd have been on their feet. So the Knights make a couple of changes on the floor. And they'll inbound here along the near sideline. So with that missed three, Crestview needs to have a solid possession here. Cut the lead under double digits. Start pecking away. Lickley, the top of the key. Fires down a little to Etzler. Down low off the window, and Etzler hangs and hits for his first basket of the evening. Nice when you got a guard at 6'3 that can work in the paint right there. Gavin Etzler with a big bucket for Crestview. Elwer on the left wing. 20 11 to score. Mishandled there by Roadhouse. Jays retain possession as Elwer. Baseline drive, spins, creates a little room. Triple team, wide open for three. Grothouse, no. Offen or defensive rebound, excuse me, by Sheets. Climbed the ladder and got it. Etzler drives, fouled. We'll see what Blue Jay it goes against. Yeah, I like Gavin Etzler's spunk ability here in the first half for Crestview. He's trying to match the freshman Cam Elwer a little bit. Penetration there, draws the foul. Three fouls apiece for both teams here with 3.32 to go in the second canto. Knights will inbound on their own baseline with 3.32. Lob to Ren Sheets. He'll give to Hunter. Harding between the circles. Back to, Hart, back to Hunter. Sheets gets, turns, faces. Hunter crosses over. Pulls a defender with him in the high post. Leans, blocked, nearly hit. Drops off the front iron. Carson and Hunter with the aggressive move. Gets in the paint. Spins to the 10 and draws the foul. Puts him to the free throw line. First foul committed by Nolan Schwinnen. As Hunter's first free throw is up and good. His first point of the evening makes it 20 to 12. 61% free throw shooter Hunter is... 3.14 to go. Ren Sheets will step out of the ball game. And Connor Sheets comes in. Connor, a six foot four junior. Hunter got them both. So Crestview on a little 4 0 run to get back in this. Cut it to seven. They were in danger zone territory a little bit, down 11. Gerker at the high right point gives to Drew Miller. As Schwinnen works left, or right, I should say. 
Always love watching an Aaron Elwer offense. All five guys are constantly moving, either looking to screen or cut to the basket. Just good movement, good patience, but Crestview comes up with the steal, Kellen Putman. And Putman gets it back in transition in the short corner on the near side. He'll bounce back out to Hunter. Sheets with his back to the basket. Gives back out to Putman. And the Knights working around the perimeter, Etzler. And they have worked the ball inside more since that timeout. Yeah. They haven't looked to shoot it down there, but we see where Connor Sheets gets the ball right there. Three on away from Hunter. No, but the offensive rebound to Kellen Putman. Sheets back to the basket. Triple teamed. Hunter once more from three. That one no good. Harding the offensive rebound. Put back. Can't hit. Two offensive rebounds for the Knights, but they come up empty-handed. Lead stays at seven with two minutes remaining in the first half. 2013 on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Bounce pass, errant pass, stolen away by Harding. It's a three on one, back the other way. Hangs, hits. Jarrett Harding, the sixth man for Crestview, comes in, gets that steal, and scores. Lead was 11, it's down to five on a 6-0 run for the Knights. Gerker, right wing. Looking to do something with it. We'll back back out. Angle to the middle of the floor. Picks up the dribble. Guarded by Harding. That's a double dribble. Well, Aaron Elwer calls timeout instead. So we'll Great take it out. with him. 125 to go after the Metzger Financial Services timeout here on WSN. High School Basketball tonight brought to you by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. 2015 of the score. Yeah, great timeout by Coach Elwer right there. A little discombobulated offensively. And we're going to get a blocking foul out front. Goes against Carson Hunter, his second. And... Not surprised coming out of the timeout, the ball was going to be in number 11's hands to get the offense started. Cameron Elwer is going to take it out now as they run their half-court set, sideline out-of-bounds set. Just over a minute 15 remaining in this first half. They'll inbound it to Austin Munner. Tries to bounce it to Aaron Munner, stolen away by Sheets. So that's three turnovers in their last four possessions on offense for the Jays. 6-0 run for the Knights. Cross-court pass to Lickley. Somehow corralled it and kept it inbounds. One minute to go in this first half. Klein in the near corner. Or excuse me, Putman in the near corner. Another nice pass into the post from Putman to Connor Sheets. Connor Sheets being wide in there offensively. He and Aaron Munter battling. It's a fifth foul committed, or excuse me, fifth foul committed by the Blue Jays, second by Aaron Munner. About said it was Munner's fifth foul. That would be uh, a lot here in this first half. <laughs> so Gavin Etzler will inbound right of his own basket as Ren Sheets will come back in for Connor Sheets. Yeah, nice job by Connor Sheets. No relations relation between the two, but Ren Sheets now may have an opportunity with Munner out of the game. Etzler off a screen for three. The Loudix three-pointers good. Give him five points on the evening. And the lead is now down to two. It's a 9-0 run for the Knights. Three-pointer for Gavin Etzler again. He is a sharp shooter for Crestview as well. One for three behind the arc thus far this evening. A big bucket for Crestview. Blue Jays in the near corner. Schwinnen has it. Guarded by Etzler. They'll pull it back out. Gives to Elwer wide open. And he can't hit the Loudix Jewelry three. Rebound pulled down by Sheets. Leckley in transition with 15 seconds. Knights will hold for the final shot. Absolutely. Crestview will want to hold this. They've got momentum. See if they can go in tight or with the lead on a three. They get it. Buttman throws right to Temple with five. Down low. Sheets dribbled it off the foot. I thought he dribbled it off the foot of Ethan Druckmiller. I think it hit Druckmiller's foot and then went off of Sheets' foot. So... The Blue Jays will have the basketball with two seconds. Elwer doesn't want to mess up the shooting percentages. Exactly. And we'll, uh, we'll call it a half. Crestview ends the half on a 9-0 run. 
20 to 18, the halftime score on Elise Seamus Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. We'll step aside, come back with third quarter action here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard says 20 to 18. And second quarter, Dave, did not go well for the Blue Jays. Yeah, they were ahead early on in the second, but then they had six turnovers in the second quarter. An interesting stat, St. John's did not shoot a two in the second quarter. They're seven for 14 overall, 50%, two for two from the line, and they have seven turnovers overall. Crestview, seven for 19 from the floor, 37%, also two for two from the line, and they have three turnovers. Blue Jays led 20 to nine at one point in the second quarter. It's now 2018 as Sheets in the post. Looks to create a little room and we're tied. I'm sure that was a point of discussion at halftime for Coach Etzler, directed specifically at Ren Sheets. We need you to be more aggressive on the block. Aaron Munner has owned you in the first half, done a real nice job defensively. Sheets gets a bucket right there. Good, good possession for Crestview. Grothaus in the lane, straight to the bucket. Shot the two, didn't get it. He'd love to have that one back because he makes that nine out of ten times. Temple the board, and he'll bring it up the floor for the Knights. I'll get it down low to Sheets. Going right to the big guy down low. That's Temple. Throws to Lickler. Back to Temple. Sets up Sheets. Aaron Munner just does a real nice job. He's got him off the block right there. Good pass by Sheets. A lot of jewelry three off the mark for the Knights, but the offensive rebound comes down to Mitch Temple. We talk about offensively post players doing their homework early and getting deep position. Aaron Munner does a great job of keeping Ren Sheets from establishing that deep position here. We see it again right now. Etzler rises, fires, and hits. So Crestview starts off how they left off, scoring the basketball. They now own a two-point advantage. 22-20 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Roadhouse comes to the right side. Gives to Cameron Elmer, guarded by Hunter. It's a screen from Munner, works left. Crosses over. Thinking about setting up Munner down low. Bounces it to him, in the post. Back to the basket. Hunter called for the block. I believe that's going to be number three on Carson Hunter. They got caught in the switch again. Uh, Crestview switching the screens. Ren Sheets was on Cameron Elwer, and that put Carson Hunter on the post player. Carson Hunter, he can guard the post. He's 6'3". It's not small fry down there at all, but Aaron Munter wins that battle, going to go to the foul line. Munter, a 22% free throw shooter. Yeah, Coach Etzler is complaining about it being a shooting foul, but with that 22%, you might think, okay, but Aaron Munt, or yeah, Aaron Munner does what you want him to do right there, makes that first one. First point of the evening for Munner. The 6'2 junior. Hit them both. Did not look like 22% there. No. Nicely done. Knights. Working around a perimeter. Lickley on the right wing. Essler comes off the screen on the right wing. Thought about the three. Instead, Jared Hardy in the high post gives back to Essler. One foot inside the center circle. He'll direct the traffic. Two minutes gone in his third quarter as Lickley bounces into Temple in the far corner. Puts it on the deck. Steps back looking for Sheets instead. Settles for Harding at the top of the key. He'll drive into the high post. Lobs back out to Etzler. Great defensive possession for the Blue Jays. Temple bounces. Stolen away by Munner. Good spacing by Crestview, but St. John's defense moving their feet. Get the turnover. Bullet pass to Austin Munner. Decides to pull it back out. Jay's patient offensively. Tied at 22. Aaron Munner right to the window, and he's got four points to start this third quarter. The blow by, the up fake on Sheets, and Aaron Munter able to get to the rim. No help side defense. Nicely done. Great offensive possession for St. John's. Harding. Top of the key, gives to Etzler. Floater in the lane, can't hit, got his own offensive rebound and put it back up at in. Gavin Etzler with the penetration, off the curl, one dribble, gets it, as you said, gets the offensive rebound, big bucket for Crestview. 
Blue Jays in the near corner. Give top of the key to Austin Munner. Elwer. Relatively quiet first half, only nine. Averages 22 as a freshman. Yeah, just very impressive. A heady player. Leading rebounder for the Blue Jays as well. Grodhouse to the window, can't hit. Sheet swipes the glass. Temple pushes the tempo for just a moment. Harding straight away gives it right back to Temple. All knotted up at 24 on the least famous recipe scoreboard. Lickley off the screen, didn't get it. As Temple will continue to hold. He'll back back near the midcourt stride. Coach Etzler calling the set from the sideline. Halfway gone in this third quarter. Still tied. Temple, right side, picks it up. Harding, left elbow jumper, off the mark. Rebound, comes down to Munner. Austin Munner, I guess I should say. Got a pair of them on the floor. Mm -hmm. Schwinnen, top of the key, throws left. Roadhouse, down low to Munner. Kicks in the near corner. First three of the night for Aaron Munner. Scoreless at the half, now has seven third quarter points. Great dribble drive offense for St. John's. The baseline was there. They get in, makes the defense collapse to the basket. Aaron Munner wide open behind the arc. Knights give back to Atzler. Oh, he bounced it off the face there of Austin Munner. Harding gets it back from Etzler. Tightly guarded by Munner and a foul committed by the junior. His first. And you see the assembled group there behind this basket. The 1983 undefeated State John State Championship men's boys basketball team being honored tonight. And the folks from the players from that 1983 team all in attendance tonight. Speaks to the tradition of Delphi St. John's Blue Jays basketball. Great honor for them. Played against that team in the sectional championship. They beat the Knights by 11. Harding, number 11, can't hit. Rebound pulled down by Ethan Druckmiller. Got a chance to talk to a couple of the guys, John Bakke and Larry Geise. Kevin Trentman on that team, point guard. Kevin Geise, Dan Geise. I can remember that game like it was yesterday. <laughs> they were a tough, tough team. Congratulations for the reunion and the recognition this evening. Yeah, you see, I, I wasn't around for the 1983 state championship, <laughs> but I was told that the district tournament that year for the AP top 10 in the Elida district that year. So the uh, the district was almost harder than the regional and the state tournament. And that was back in the days of single A, double A, and triple A. So that was a single A tournament. Wirtz gets the inbounds, gives to Elwer, working on Lickley. Picked up the dribble. Gets it right back. Eyed the rim for just a moment. Now is open for three, and he hits the Loudix Jewelry three. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. Crestview backs away, and Cameron Elward does what Cameron Elward does in that situation. Takes advantage of the wide open look and buries it. He's got 12, six point lead. Three on the way from Isaac Klein is up in good. And he's got a Loudix Jewelry three of his own. Coach Etzler's got to be very happy with his bench play tonight. He's had guys come off the, the uh, bench and play well defensively and offensively. Ike Klein, one of those with the bucket right there. Roadhouse throws right. Elwer gets the screen from Gerker. One on one, rises, fires. Too strong off the heel. Rebound to Connor Sheets. Temple, cross-court pass, Lickley wide open. Can't hit, dropped three quarters of the way down and popped back out on him. It was bound to happen. Nate Lickley has been so hot. He has been on fire shooting the, the rock from behind the arc tonight. I don't believe he has a three no. ball yet. Scoreless. He's had good looks. They just haven't gone down, but you want him to keep taking that shot when he has the opportunity. He shoots behind the arc. 53% second on this night squad from deep. 30-27 to score on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Grovehouse looks to inbound. Holds. Gets it into Drew Miller. Bounces right back. Grovehouse. Munner gives left to Elworth. 
trying to get to Aaron Munner down low. Instead, gives to Austin Munner between the circles. Elwer off a screen, had a little space. Instead, drives, hangs, hits. Just so strong in there. Up fakes and goes over the defense with a little eight footer. Very pretty. Under a minute to go into third, a five point advantage now for the Blue Jays. As Temple holds. Lickley at the high left point. Looking for some room to work with. Hands off to Temple. He'll point, point out play number one with 35 seconds to go. He's, oh, a block goes against Landon Grothaus, his second. Eric Schwab with the call. I thought maybe Grothaus got there in position, but maybe Mike just didn't have his feet quite set. He's going to come out of the game now. Good defense. Nolan Schwinnen comes in. The Lickley will inbound. Lobs into the backcourt to Temple with 30 seconds remaining in this quarter. I don't know that you necessarily look for a last second shot at this point in time. Run your set, see what you get. Lickley will throw left to Kellen, or Isaac Klein, excuse me. And then a foul. I think they're going to get Austin Munter. His second. Off ball foul. So each squad has picked up three fouls here in this third quarter. So now with 18 seconds, I do think you look for that last shot of the quarter. Klein inbounds to Lickley. We're going to run a screen, a flare screen for Lickley. Not there. Nice play. Swatted from behind by Nolan Schwinn as Mitch Temple went to the hoop. And you hear the Blue Jay faithful like the defense. Absolutely. Mitch Temple had a lane to the basket. Schwinnen recovers to knock it out of bounds, make things tough on the Knights. 10.2, they lob into Ren Sheets at the right elbow. Mitch Temple, and a offensive foul goes against the Knights. Going to call Gavin Etzler for an illegal screen. So with seven and a half to go in the quarter, St. John's going to have a crack at it. Yeah, five-point lead, chance to extend it to seven or eight. Could be a big momentum builder going into the fourth. Let's see what happens, Garrett. Knights will double-team Elworth. Stolen away by Lickley. Temple wide open. Instead, will drive straight down Main Street. Hoop and the foul. Oh, boy, Garrett, from five to stretching it to seven. Crestview turns the tables and has a chance to cut it to two. What a great defensive play by Nate Lickley stealing it, finding Temple. Could have set up shot for the deep three. Instead, went right to the bucket. Yeah, going to work for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. I loved how he read the situation. Didn't settle for the three ball from deep. Misses the free throw, but shoots with the board. Lickley at the horn. Good if it goes. Does it? And we play three. 32-29. Blue Jays with the advantage. Fourth quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 32-29 is a fourth quarter about to get underway, and the first missed free throw there for Crestview at the end of that quarter, Dave. Yeah, our stats unofficially from our stat guys, Brad Hughes and Kent Ralston. Crestview, 4 for 10 for 40%. 0 for 1 from the line. Five boards, two turnovers. St. John's three for seven from the floor for 43%. Two for two, six for six for the game are the Johnnies from the foul line. One turnover, two rebounds. Blue Jays with the lead in the basketball. As Landon Grothaus hits the deck hard, you see good sportsmanship there by Nate Lickley to help him up. Lickley picks up the personal. His first. Again, two squads having great years. Crestview 16-1, St. John's 12-5. Northwest Conference and MAC Championships. Crestview leads the NWC with 19. St. John's third in the MAC with nine. Tradition rich programs, and as we said earlier, St. John's community honoring that 1983 squad. Undefeated 40 years ago. I cannot believe that, Garrett. <laughs> 40 years ago. Has the world changed at all in those oh, 40 years? Maybe yeah. just a hair. So 32-29, 15 seconds into this quarter. Both squads, speaking of some similarities, both 7-1 on the road this year. So 
St. John's actually 5-4 and four here in the Vatican, which regarded as one of the tougher places to play. As you see, Cameron Elward drop one in, give him 16 points on the evening. Crestview shows the first possession of zone for the evening in that possession, 1-3-1 one, one zone, and Cameron Elward's eyes lit up. If I can get a reversal here, I can do that crossover and get a shot at the foul line. Does exactly that and puts it down. Etzler gives to Temple. Surveys cross-court pass to Lickley. Etzler holds on his right hip. Works back to the center of the floor. Throws left to Temple. Hunter off a screen. Etzler straight away. Guarded by Munner. Gives to Hunter. Lickley bounces down low. Sheets gives to Temple. Picks up the dribble. Back to Lickley. Hunter will hold between the circles. The Blue Jay faithful cheering on their defense as Temple flashes across the high post and backs back out near the center circle with 6.30 to go in this tight contest. Both teams with their starters out on the floor. Five on five, mano y mano. Temple on the left wing, gets down low to Sheets, guarded by Munner, kicks Hunter straight away. Lee, the three-pointer, no. Offensive rebound goes off the fingertips of Sheets and goes to the Jays. Good inside-out action. Sheets to Hunter there, but I, I'm sure Coach Etzler would like to see Ren Sheets look to score a little bit more than kick it out in that situation. Attack the basket, draw the foul, get to the free throw line. Crestview's going to stay in the 1-3-1 zone. Knights, winners of 13 in a row coming into tonight. Trailing by five. Schwinnett for three. Off the heel, long rebound, comes out to Elworth. He's got a little bit of space to work with. Instead, will bounce to Munner. Elworth will hold with 5.45 to go on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. St. John's is going to be patient here. Look to attack the seams. Elwer tried to fire a pass into the corner. Does. Laudix Jewelry three off the mark and a rebound pulled down by Temple. Nearly poked from behind by Schwinnen. We'll see what Crestview does here, but that could be a very big possession in this game right there. If Crestview can convert and narrow this lead down to two or three. Hunter works left down Main Street. Hangs, can't hit. And a rebound still loose. Finally scooped up by Elwer. Great penetration by Carson Hunter. Just comes up empty. Needs that. Crestview needed that bucket right there. And Crestview goes back to man-to-man -man defense. Elwer gets a high ball screen from Munner. Works to the right. Under five remaining. Elwer one-on-one -on -one with Sheets. Jump stops at the block. Foul on the floor. Goes Red against Sheets. Ren Sheets. That's his first. Again, Cam Elwer reading, I got the 6'6 post player on me. I'm going to look to get by him. He does. Sheets picks up the personal. Not a bad foul, really, because Etzler did score. Uh, Elwer did score the bucket with the foul before the shot. Roadhouse into Elwer. Clears out baseline drive. Got it. A lot of contact. No call. Could have been a block or a charge. It's a play on. And Cam Elwer with the bucket. Lickley on the right wing as the Blue Jays faithful get even louder here inside Robert A. Orange and Gymnasium. If you're Lickley. Crestview, you might think of a timeout right now. Pressured. Gives to Harding. He'll hold. Bounces. Temple crosses over. Working against Schwinnen. Backs back out to the high right point with 415. Lickley off the screen. Bounces to Sheets. Back to the basket, working in the post. Back to Lickley, drives, Harding, right elbow, hands off to Temple. Nowhere to go, and a foul called against Elwood. Penetration by Mitch Temple picks up the personal against the Blue Jays. So that's the first foul committed by Cameron Elwood. And a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well after the Metzger Financial Services timeout. 36-29, Jays lead here on WOSN. Three points tonight brought to you by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at Coldwater or Van Wert, or you can find them online at loudixjewelry.com.
Erlautics.com. 36-29, Jays, or excuse me, Knights might need a couple of Lonics Jewelry threes climbing back in here. Yeah, it'd be, be very beneficial for the team in blue, but Aaron Elward takes the defensive timeout. Crestview's going to run a set under out of bounds. Lickley for three. Can't hit off the heel. Sheets the rebound, and he's called for the foul. Coach Hetzler not upset with Sheets' aggressiveness on defense, but he does go over the back. It's going to be St. John's basketball. Good checkout again by Aaron Munter on the 6'6", Ren Sheets. So that's the seventh foul committed by the Knights. So and we're going to go to the other end and shoot to one and bonus for one Aaron Munter. So the Blue Jays trailing, or excuse me, leading by seven with 3.55 to go. Munter hit a pair of free throws earlier in this third in the third quarter. Scoreless at the half. He's got seven here in the second half. And they've been huge. He's been that third guy here as of late that has stepped up for the Blue Jays scoring-wise. And again, Coach Elwer has said he's been the most improved player in the program this season. And again, he hits another free throw. He's three for three on the night. And 22% free throw shooter, those, those don't combine, Garrett. No, he's now up to eight points this evening. Lead grows to eight. Now it's at nine. Thirty-eight twenty-nine on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Knights looking for a bucket. Hunter directs traffic, gets to Sheets. Top of the key, works right, guarded by Munner. Lickley on the right wing. Etzler in the lane. Lose lays it up and in. Nice penetration by Gavin Etzler. A much needed bucket for the Knights to cut the lead to seven. Etzler leads the Knights with 11 after that hoop. Elwer, guarded by Etzler. Cross is over. Battle of Coach's Sons. Gets a high screen from Munner. At the high right point. Etzler, guarding Elwer. As Grothaus moves to his left. I think the ball's going to be in the hands of Landon Grothaus and Cameron Elwer predominantly here for the Blue Jays down the stretch. The basketball IQ of those two players just simply outstanding. Elwer begging Sheets to come out and guard him. Now going to be double teamed by Lickley. Gets it to Grothaus. Fouled by Hunter. Fourth foul committed by the 6'3 senior. 38-31. Knights have won 13 in a row coming into tonight. That's going to send Landon Grothaus to the free throw line, the leading free throw shooter for the Jays at 85%. One in the bonus, Garrett. And he hits. Grothaus with seven. Pair of Loudix Jewelry three-pointers before that one. Now the lead out to eight for the Jays. And he got that one, too. So it's a nine-point lead, 2.45 to go. Excuse me. That's look. Gives to Temple on the left side. Sheets throws right to Lickley. Temple to Hunter off a screen. Bounces down low to Sheets and a foul committed by Aaron Munner. Put his hands on Sheets' back. He's been very physical down there, but he's kept his hands off of him, and that's what drew the foul. So the Knights retain possession. As Gavin Etzler will throw in right of his own basket. Lobs into Sheets. Gets to Temple. He's got a path to the bucket. Fouled and the bucket. Mitch Temple takes advantage of the overplay and attacks the rim. Hoop in the harm for Mitch Temple. Great medicine for the Crestview Knights right here, and Coach Etzler's going to take a timeout. He calls the Metzger Financial Services timeout 40 33, 224 to go with a fourth here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit Metzger Financial Services. Com. It is a seven-point lead for the Blue Jays. 
Crescu trying to cut into it after the made basket by Mitch Temple. He'll step to the free throw line to try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play. Great communication timeout for Coach Etzler. I believe we'll see the Knights either come in with full court man pressure or maybe a little 2-2-1 action. And we'll see how the Johnnies look to dissect it. So Temple at the line. Averages nine points a contest at 11 tonight. And now is it 12 after hitting every bit of the rim. And the lead is down to six. Crestview in man-to-man, -man, full court pressure. Going to double the ball. As Grothaus tripped. And the Knights end up with a basketball. Temple in the lane, spins, drops it in. And Landon Grothaus, when he went down, his left shoulder, I think, popped out. He's had to fight with that throughout his career. He is a glue guy for the Blue Jays. Hopefully that's not very serious. But they're going to take him off the floor, I believe, unfortunately. Yeah, so we'll step aside momentarily. 2.12 to go, 40-36. Back with more fourth quarter action coming up on WOSN. After the injury to Landon Grothaus, the Blue Jays have the basketball with a four-point advantage, 2.12 to go. Crestview staying in the full court man pressure. Jack Gerker inserted into the lineup for Grothaus. A guard who can shoot a little bit. As Elwood double teamed right of the center circle in a tough spot. Timeout called by the Jays. Knights thought they had a jump ball. And the Blue Jays will take the timeout. Under two to go. We'll step aside as well. 40-36 here on WOSN. Three-pointers tonight brought to you by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. St. John's got the timeout right there before the held ball situation. Just a Cameron Elward did dribble into the trap zone, put himself in a tough spot. Coach Elward with the timeout. And looks like a possible Long steal. Pass. Munner somehow chases it down. Blue Jay faithful, won a foul committed against Mitch Temple, and they'll get it on the second swat. So Austin Munner is going to go to, or I'm sorry, Aaron Munner is going to go to the free throw line. <laughs> Again, statistically, if you're a Crestview Knight fan, that's who you want there. But in this game, he has been nothing but an ultra competitor, being perfect from the line up to this point, four for four. And that four, those four points are the difference in the game so far as Ethan Druckmiller will come back in for Austin Bunner. And Dave, when you take a player like Landon Grothaus off the floor, what does that do to, or how does that change things for Delta St. John's? It does and it doesn't. Obviously, Coach Elward plays a lot of guys, but down the stretch, Landon Grothaus is somebody who's going to be out on the floor, and he's not there. So it puts a little more leadership on Cameron Elward, the freshman. We'll see how it plays out. Munner misses the free throw. Sheets fouled on the block by Ethan Druckmiller. And that will send Crestview to the line, shooting one and one. Physical play in the post. That's going to put Ren Sheets at the free throw line, where he is a 72, 71% free throw shooter. The 6'6 sophomore. Shooting one in the bonus. Got it. He's got five points on the evening. Average is just over 11. And he's had to work hard for everything. Compliments of one Aaron Munter. So the lead is down to three. Can trim it to two. Get one more made free throw. Sheets, that one pops out on him. So the Blue Jays lead with a Loudix Jewelry three-pointer as Elwer dribbles around. So we approach 90 seconds. And there's your foul called again. Cam Elwer is who Coach Elwer wants at the free throw line. Cam wants to go to the line. He is the second leading free throw shooter on this team at 83%. Big ones for the Blue Jays. Looking to make it a two possession game with 131 to go. And we are in the double bonus now. Got the first. 
Elwer, 19 points, his season high, if you're wondering, 32 against Continental. We saw him go for 31 against Elida, one of the first weekends of the season. Got them both for smooth. an even 20. What did you use, peanut butter earlier? Smooth as peanut butter. <laughs> that was smooth right there. Five point advantage for the Jays. Etzler rises, fires, hits. Gavin Etzler does what you want if you're a Crestview Knights fan. Gets a quick bucket from 15 feet and Coach Etzler with a quick timeout. So we'll keep it here with 120 to go. A three point lead for Delphi St. John's. He'll have the basketball or at least have the basketball trying to inbound it out of the timeout and uh, just a clutch jump shot there made by Gavin Etzler. Absolutely and now Crestview's going to transition again. I think they'll stay with their uh, full court man defense. Maybe more denial on number 11 than anyone else. The question will be, will Coach Etzler look to play a little defense and see if he can get a turnover, or will he have his squad foul immediately? I think if it's not in Cam Etzler or Cam Elwer's uh, hands, I keep saying Cam Etzler because that was right, a point guard for Elwer, our team. Yeah. yeah, point guard for our 2014 state championship team at Crestview. But I think the focus is to keep it out of Elwer's hands and then foul anyone else right now have more possessions. And on the flip side, St. John's is saying, get it to Cameron Elwer and don't give it up until you're going to get a five-second call. And right now, Mitch Temple and Gavin Etzler both on Elwer, and Gavin Etzler face-guarding Elwer here as we bring the ball across with Nolan Schwinnen. Schwinnen, an 80% free-throw shooter in his own right. Elwer in a tight spot, dribbles out of it somehow. Bounces out of it, and they'll get it to Munner. Munner fouled as Austin Munner. Austin Munner has only been to the free throw line nine times this year. That's the bad news as far as regularity there, but the good news, he's made eight of them. Austin Munner, 89% free throw shooter. Here we go, Garrett. The 5'11 junior hits the first. Ice in the veins. His first point of the evening. Throws the lead back out to four with just over one minute remaining on the Lee's Famous Recipe scorebook. Scoreboard. Can't hit the second. Grabbed by Etzler off the rim. Four point lead. Lickley. Quiet tonight. Temple on the left block. Bounces back to Hunter. Looking for a little room to work with. Great defense by the Blue Jays. It's blocked by Elwer. And he'll keep it in play. Elwer still in the backcourt. Tightly guarded. Schwinnen gets it across. Gets it right back to Elwer with 30 seconds to go. And the foul committed by Etzler. No choice for Crestview but the foul. Cam Elwer. He gave the ball up. What did he do there? He went right back and got it. He wants the basketball in this situation. And now he's going to go to the free throw line shooting two. 31.2. Seconds to go. Elwer grows the lead to five. Do you think St. John's fans are looking forward to watching him the next three plus years? He's working almost, probably going to finish the season close to 500 points as a freshman. And that right there is why he's got 22. Knights have to move quickly. Lickley off his screen, fires. Got it for the Loudix three-pointer. Nate Lickley's first three-pointer of the evening, first points of the evening, cut the lead to three at 45-42 on the Loudix Jewelry three. And he shot it with no hesitation, just like you would want a senior to do in that situation. Buries it. As you said, cuts the lead to three, but for some reason, maybe it's just me, Garrett, it just feels like there's more of a lead here. It just seems like St. John's is in control, and I think that has a lot to do with number 11. So the Knights take the Metzger Financial Services timeout. They've got one in their back pocket. St. John's with two, with 22.4 seconds to go. And the Knights, it's the, the chess match with 15, 16, 17, and 18 year olds. Knights want to deny Cameron Elwer the basketball, and St. John's wants to make sure he gets it. Absolutely. I think Crestview will go into their full denial center field defense here, switch all screens, but focusing on not allowing Cam Etzler to touch. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> Cam Elwer to touch the basketball. I apologize. 
And I like how St. John's is setting up deeper to give themselves more room to go back to the basketball. Schwinnen has the baseline to work with. He inbounds to Munner. He's fouled, and Austin Munner will tow the free throw line in a pivotal spot, 20.3, and a three-point advantage for the Blue Jays, looking to end Crestview's 13-game winning streak. Austin Munner, one for two, his last time at the free throw line. Got it. Looks very comfortable right there at the free throw line, does one Austin Munner. Ren Sheets comes in for Jared Harding for Crestview. Lead four. Left it short, Hunter the board. Knight's got to work quickly. Temple, or excuse me, Etzler, down low to Hunter, fouled, and he'll shoot two, but maybe more importantly, we'll have the opportunity to score with the, the clock stopped. Yeah, Austin Munner's going to pick up the personal. Carson Hunter's going to go to the free throw line. 61% free throw shooter. Crestview needs both of these desperately. Munner's fourth. Hunter hits. Question will be, will Coach Etzler use a timeout on a make or will he sub on a make in order to stop the clock and get his defense set? Hunter back at the line, trailing by three. Too strong. Rebound, Schwinnen to Elwer. Forced to foul with five seconds. And Cameron Elwer will try to ice the game from the free throw line. And the St. John's family senses victory. Everyone out of their seats. I believe if we see Elwer make the first one, they'll pull the players as his teammates will step off the free throw line. 6.3 after the scoreboard puts a couple up, puts a second or two back on. Elwer, nothing but net. Timeout called by Aaron Elwer with six seconds remaining. We'll step aside as well. More fourth, more fourth quarter action coming up after the Metzger Financial Services timeout here on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. There are 6.3 seconds remaining on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. It's 47-43. St. John's at the line, and Cameron Elwer has been clutch from the line here in the second half. He's been clutch. He's won at the basketball. His teammates have looked for him. Obviously, 83% free throw shooter, that's where you want to go. He knocks that one home. Knights trailing by five. Temple hands off to Lickley for the Loudix Jewelry Free. Missed it, and that'll do it. The Delta St. John's Blue Jays have ended Crestview's 13-game winning streak here inside the Vatican by a 48-43 to score on a night day honor. Their undefeated 1983 state championship Aaron Elwer runs down to greet the 83 championship team as they grab a big victory before the sectional tournament draw. 48-43, the Knights victorious, propelled by 24 points from freshman Cameron Elwer. Had nine at the halftime break, 15 here in the second half, and a lot of them coming from the free throw line, Dave Bowen. Cameron Elwer again will be the first one to share this victory, obviously, with his teammates. But, man, he is just a special, special young man. And then he's a really good basketball player on top of that. Just does a nice job of understanding the situation. Landon Grothaus goes out with the injury. The whole contingent of St. John players, they didn't let that bother them. It just was a little bit more priority, a little more focus on getting Cam Elwer, the basketball in a position where he would get fouled and go to the free throw line and put this one away for St. John's. Chris, you needed a couple out of Shory three-pointers down the stretch. Couldn't quite get them as Aaron Munner, I think, did a, you mentioned, you know, the battle of 33s down low. Ren Sheets and Aaron Munner went at it all night and 
Aaron Munner, a guy who, you know, inserted into the lineup, really coming on as the season progresses and is a, is a big difference in the victory tonight. Absolutely. As we've said throughout the broadcast and talking to Coach Elwer, he's been so pleased with the improvement of one Aaron Munter. Did an outstanding job in being physical with Ren Sheets, but not fouling him. It was a tough night. Ren Sheets has been very successful all year long getting offensive rebounds and putbacks and be able to move and drop step to the basket. Aaron Munner did not let him do that tonight. Held Sheets to five points. That was huge in this victory for St. John's as well. 13 points for Gavin Etzler in the loss, 14 for Mitch Temple. Delphi St. John's led by 24 from freshman Cameron Elwer for the victory here tonight. For our fantastic WOSN crew, Mia Waddle, Stephen McNeil, and Nick Fraley, and Dave Bowen, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long. We'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.